what's been great is the support that the professional comedians lend to these people. Um, some of whom I think are now actually sort of considering moving into the professional realm. Um, one girl I'm thinking of in particular is a social worker in New York City, and I think she has, read, has seen that her comedy ranks right up there with the professionals, and I think the professionals have been really supportive. There's less of a cutthroat, I think, feeling among, among, uh, among uh, amateur versus professionals. The other thing I want to say in, in response to this is uh, one of the great, I don't know if it's a revelation, but one of the great um, byproducts of Witstream in particular, I've noticed, is the emergence of strong female voices on that site. Um, there is a stigma to this day about women in comedy, and Twitter and, and, and I think our site, Witstream, have proven that women not only hold their own against the men, in, in a lot of cases they're besting them, and that, that's been a great thing to see. And also, just one name, Rob Delaney. Uh, you know, I mean, an, an amazing Twitterer, uh, and I believe like that has launched his career. It's simply, it's, it's, and, and everybody's been extremely supportive of him. And, and uh, I mean, I met Rob, and he was hosting a wedding uh, three years back, and, and immediately I recognized that his Twitter stream was amazing. And, and the community has been very supportive of that. I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't admit that he's one of the most clever people on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> Um, this is a panel about social media blogging, or social media comedy. Um, most of you guys seem to have a bit more of a club background, whether it's booking clubs, managing, appearing in. Um, there's a ballroom over there right now with a guy from 4chan, who's very famous, um, creating a website that is completely anonymous. Do you ever feel pressured as a comedian who's known to be funny to enter into that realm where you're, you're creating like anonymous comedy things, whether it's a local cat, like putting words on funny pictures? There's a lot of people that sit at home and they aren't old enough to go to a comedy club, but they're laughing hysterically and sharing like Chuck Norris facts and things like that um, with their friends. Do you guys ever feel like a need to enter into that world? Are you more comfortable performing live? The world of anonymity? No, but more just like... Um... <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> what I'm saying is a lot of people might, like, might not be access or able to go to your live show, right. whether you're in there, uh, in the town, yeah. but your airplane's free. Right. That, is, that type of story is the type of thing that people will really share with each other. Do you ever feel pressure to, um, maybe not pressure, but excited about creating those sort of outside the club environment comedy type situations or, or memes or whatever? Sure, just as long as it's not someone saying, I've got a great idea, you do stand up on a bus. You know, that, that kind of stuff is probably. But I mean, the podcast is that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do that all the time. And I do it on the podcast in the car. And, you know, I like things to happen in the real world. Like right now, I know that Andy Dick just left a message on my phone. But to answer your question, as far as that goes, uh, for, for a comedy club, for us, it's uh, uh, perhaps, uh, for us, it's more important to be associated with funny, period. We do not have an act. So for us, we tend to do things like, like, like the little fuck yeah guy here. Uh, you know, and, and, and the comedy store is on Tumblr, as you saw. Because for us, it's more important, but their, their stuff is a little more specific. They are, they are stand-up comics. And, and so their, uh, their, their method of comedy is not going to involve a cat picture with a, with a little subtitle. You know, it, it, that's just, it's a different genre. I've known a lot of comics, and particularly now, who work in sort of both worlds. I'm thinking of a guy named Joe Mandy right now who does really funny stuff just based on what he finds on the web and puts it out there. Yeah. Um, that's sometimes a lot of it's Photoshop intensive, some of it's just video editing intensive, and that exists in uh, addition to his just regular performance stuff. I mean, it, I, I think it all, it all can work and does work as a whole. Um, and I think comedians actually are sort of constantly looking for new ways to sort of get themselves out there uh, regardless of whether or not there's actual money involved, I think they just they just they want to be creative. I think that's true for all the people in all creative fields. We only have time for a few, a couple quick questions. So from the audience, please, uh, please let one of the questions be about uh, your mustache wax. One of the about mustache wax. What brands? CBS. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious who you, you uh, 
uh, fellow exhibitor who we think does an excellent job with the medium. Um, the second part to the question, sorry, didn't know if we were short on time, was, um, so I have a question for Michael Ian Black. Ian Black. Ian Black. Um, if you guys were doing the Wet Hot American Summer now, do you think that it would have been promoted differently? And do oh, you think no that it would have been extremely, I, I mean, in a post? That's a, that's a small movie that I was involved with that came out in 2001. And at the time, yeah, but there was not the, these, these kind of uh, outlets for, for social media. I, I think, um, yes, any a promotion in general, as you guys, as basically we're talking about, is an entirely different world now. The way things spread uh, has become much more bottom up and top down. So um, the ability to be viral, the ability to sort of start grassroots campaigns is possible now in a way that was almost impossible even 10 years ago. And a lot of that is expressed through these communities, whether they are they're on Twitter or Woodstream or uh, you know any of these places. Um, so yeah, it would, it would have been promoted much differently. Whether or not it would have been a success, I, I can't say. I mean, you know, snakes on a plane. I think is a per perfect example of how you can see a result. So do you want to show who you follow on Twitter? Oh, as far as people on, on Twitter, that uh, I would echo out with. Uh, Rob Delaney, I think he's, he's raucous, but he's raucously funny. I also like uh, Dave Hill. He's yeah, originally from Mr. Mr. Dave Hill is his handle. Uh, he's originally from Quickle Meat. He lives in New York now. He does a great job. Jimmy Johnson, high five. Yeah. I think he's still pretty funny. Yeah. Teresa Dugan, I call him. And now we have uh, Olivia Sejas. Oh, loves Adderall. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Adderall. She's very funny. An interesting thing with that is that uh, for the comic store, it's also important that, that uh, we be a source of all sorts of information. We have a place in your life. So we follow, uh, we follow scientists and we follow uh, authors. And uh, if, if we're given that opportunity, if there's something that's extremely interesting or extremely relevant, we will, we will retweet that. Yeah, and because of his retweet, I had a roboticist on my last live WTF Bell House. I think it's going to go up Monday. Uh, there are other reasons for, uh, for booking her, but um, but nonetheless, it was fascinating. It was a robot that did stand-up comedy, and then I also booked, uh, to counter her, I booked Otto and George. So I had this uh, filthy ventriloquist countering the roboticist threat at his livelihood. Okay, last question. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Um, I got another YouTube question. Um, I'm down to South by Southwest to uh, essentially uh, release the technology to do live body and face animations that can be streamed to the web. Um, you're saying that, all of you here are saying that um, essentially you're not making any money through YouTube or it's a bad idea. Are any of you seeing any revenue through different ways to monetize uh, YouTube viewers? All? I think, I think um, the monetization of social media is a a little bit of a, of a tough thing to address, especially in this panel. Um, you know, you may be able to do it, but uh, there's a lot of very smart people out there trying to figure out how to turn those numbers <coughs> into dollars. And I think I think that that sort of uh, diminishes the spirit in, in, in of, of a lot of what's what's really come out of it. Um, I, I can say uh, for sure that I know that online content is important. And especially for a comedy club, for us to have clips, of, especially of our younger comics, uh, out there, so that people can, can not only see them, but see that we are promoting them, I think is extremely important. But seeing direct revenue from that, I think, is cynical. And also, uh, the uh, I guess also yeah, you got to pay the I actually disagree about that because, uh, you know, if you do put your stuff out there, there's, there's a sketch group called Mail Order Comedy that was out there for a long time. And somebody in Comedy Central came across their, their videos. And somebody in MySpace came across their videos. And first, they were hired by MySpace to create, to create content, and they were making money on MySpace. And then from that, somebody in Comedy Central saw them, and they have a show they do next week. And so now they've got, you know, a full-on show. And by putting some stuff out there, they evolve from that, and they are making money now. But, but it is an organic evolution. It is not something where, where you're seeking to specifically monetize YouTube numbers. No, I think, I think you're seeing raise awareness and get your stuff out there. 
But if you know if it's not out there, no one's there to find it. Right. Okay, we we hit the hour mark. So uh, before we wrap this up, uh, starting with Mark, uh, let's uh, see if you guys have anything to plug, whether it's here at uh, oh, the festival. Uh, yeah, I, we're doing a live WTF on Tuesday night with uh, Nick Youssef, Jenna Friedman, Bart Gelman, or Brett Gelman, and um, Broad Hour, Kurt Broad Hour, and maybe Doug Benson, and maybe Shane Mouse, and maybe Michael A. Black. Clearly, I, I didn't book it fully. <laughs> We still will have shows uh, throughout the week uh, here at South by Southwest, but starting on Tuesday, we'll be at uh, the Cap City Club uh, at 8 o'clock, and, uh, and then at the Firehouse uh, for the rest of the, the week on that. Kim? Uh, promoting Tell Your Friends, the documentary, the concert film. It's airing uh, the world premiere Thursday at the Vimeo Theater. I have some cards if you guys are interested, but it features Mark Marin, actually, Janine Garofalo, Gavigan, some live performances from Reggie Watts, Kristen Shaw, and my husband, Christian Finnegan. So you can follow Christian on Twitter at Christ Finnegan and myself at Camry, K-A-M-B-R-I. Um, well, uh, for myself, uh, actually, I'm going to get but our, our network is doing uh, John Oliver's shows tomorrow night, which is great. And um, we'll be doing a live stream with Jeff Ross on Tuesday. Um, this will be shot out of New York, actually, for the uh, Pretty Rose show for the Donald Trump uh, premiere. So that should be uh, fun to see all the social media involved in that. Michael? Just use Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for, for sitting here and uh, asking the questions.